Welcome to chapter 8, which is all about Oceania. This is going to be our shortest um, region and our last of the semester. I do this all in um, one section, and then you guys are going to uh, watch a film available online through the library. Um, so we are talking about um, Oceania. The region is made up of Australia, New Zealand, uh, Papua New Guinea, and a small bunch of islands, the Nessias. There are three different cultural groups, um, the tiny islands of Micronesia, the black islands, which include um, Fiji and Papua New Guinea, and then many other small um, Pacific islands, including uh, Kiribati and French Polynesia. And so I just want to point out climatically um, how the region is similar to the U.S., but uh, note that the latitude is not the same on the map. This is in the southern hemisphere, so this is flocked up to um, kind of reflect uh, that difference so we can get an idea next to the U.S. Um, but a significant portion is uh, much um, uh, closer to the equator uh, than the United States. So the climate of the region, um, we have a lot of tiny islands that are hot and rainy, uh, mostly in the tropics. Um, New Zealand, which is at a mid-latitude, which is rainy, um, but um, cooler, so kind of a Pacific Northwest type climate. Um, and then Australia, which is mostly dry, most of the population, which we'll learn, is around the periphery. That outback um, of Australia, that Seta region, is um, mostly a desert, but it is rainier um, on the East Coast um, due to prevailing winds. We have a few different uh, land types, excuse me, land type types. <laughs> um, the continental, where we have large masses of continental crust, uh, which is Australia, New Zealand, and New Guinea. Um, and then we have high islands, which are uh, la large volcanic peaks. So we can see uh, Morea, which is a French Polynesia um, typical high island. Um, many plate boundaries in the region, uh, so lots of subduction leading to lots of volcanoes. Um, some of them are active, some of them are not. And then we have low islands, which are uh, made of coral, which are called atolls, and we'll learn a little bit more about atolls and what they are a little bit uh, later in the lecture. The continental landscapes, Australia, again, mostly flat, um, a few small mountains in the east. And then New Zealand and New Guinea, um, we have mountainous, large volcanic peaks. So what is an atoll? Um, an atoll is um, these small coral islands that are formed from volcanic high islands. Um, so in the beginning, you have a volcano, and then you have a reef um, that is building up around that volcano. And then the volcano erodes away, but that reef keeps building up. And so when the volcano is gone and completely eroded away, um, we still have that reef remaining, which is um, a very uh, low-lying land formation. So you get this circular island or islands with a lagoon in the center. And so we can see here um, in the top left, we have Morea, um, which again is that high island, that volcanic island. And then Bora Bora in kind of that next stage where most of that island has eroded away. And then there is um, an unnamed atoll in French Polynesia. It looks like a big ring of reef with that lagoon in the middle. Lots of vulnerable ecosystems in the region. Um, small islands equal small ecosystems, and small ecosystems um, have really evolved to have uh, kind of this unique ecological balance, and so very um, susceptible to invasive species. So again, we have these isolated spaci spe spaces and these unique or adapt adapted species, such as marsupials or kiwi birds, um, things that are found only in these areas. Um, humans are relatively new um, to these land masses. Um, so Australia and New Zealand saw the extinction of large um, megafauna, um, so mostly uh, smaller animals that are living there, lots of problems with invasive species, things like feral pigs, rabbits, rats, and possums that were brought there, um, mostly by Europeans. When we look at the population of the region, it is very sparsely populated. Um, again, physically isolated um, from uh, other large continents. 
Um, most land is either mountainous or dry or coral, so it cannot support large uh, populations. And so um, if we look at Australia's population density, again, it's mostly near the coast. The interior is very, very sparsely populated. There are lots of difference differences in development in the region. So you have um, Australia and New Zealand very, very high on the human development index of 0.9. And remember, um, one is perfect, which nobody has. Very low rate of natural increase, very high um, uh, per capita income. And juxtaposed with a place like Papua New Guinea, much higher rate of natural increase, much lower on the human development index, um, and just a fraction of the per capita income. Also, when you look at Australia and New Zealand, 83% urban population um, versus only about 13% in Papua New Guinea. And so we look at the cultural distribution of the region. Um, Australia and New Guinea have been inhabited for at least about 10,000 years. Um, most other islands have only been inhabited for the last 2,000 years. Um, and we saw European and American colonization in the 19th century. And so we have uh, many colonies that still exist today. Um, for example, Guam is a U.S. territory, um, but most of them are um, independent. And so to look at culture a little bit more, we have um, Australian, New Zealand, or Aussie and Kiwi culture. Um, the British legacies um, in these countries are very apparent. If you look at the flags um, and uh, what their um, cities look like, there's a picture of Melbourne in Australia and Wellington in New Zealand. Um, they have small but significant indigenous populations, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, and also lots of migration from Asia to the region. Um, so they have kind of culturally and economically pivoted away from um, Europe and America, um, more towards that of Asia. Um, for indigenous populations in Australia, we have um, Aboriginal Australians um, who are related to um, Melanesians in the area, and they've had similar treatment to Native Americans in the U.S. Um, they have been victims of ethnic cleansing, also death by disease, um, so when uh, Europeans came to the United States, as many as 90% of Native Americans um, died um, from warfare, but also from um, disease brought uh, by Europeans. Um, they've also had land taken away, similar to Native Americans. Um, they do not have uh, reservations uh, in Australia like we do in the United States. Um, today, there are about 500,000 um, Aboriginal Australians left. Um, and they are, they suffer from kind of endemic poverty, and they are also um, extremely culturally marginalized in the country. Um, this is a little different than the Maori of New Zealand. They are a Polynesian ethnic group. Um, they are marginalized, but they are generally better off than Aboriginals in Australia. Um, Maori language is originalized as an is recognized as an official language um, in New Zealand, and there is more interest in and respect for Maori culture, which is also uh, on the rise. You can see um, that sign on the bottom there, um, where um, place names are both um, in English and in Maori. Um, and there's also been more mixing of cultures, both socially and by marriage, than in Australia. Um, as opposed to in Australia, where Aboriginals have remained mostly um, separate um, from other populations. Um, in Papua New Guinea, um, there was a, there's a tropical climate, so there was much fewer white settlers. Again, we're looking at more of a mercantile um, than a settlement colony there. Um, there is some uh, minor British influence. Um, Lots of rugged terrain, so lots of separation of uh, tribes. Um, over 836 languages in, in Papua New Guinea, which is um, very, which is a lot of languages for a very, very um, small area. Um, but a long history of uh, violent disputes um, between tribes. And so Papua New Guinea mirrors Sub-Saharan Africa in terms of um, development. Um, we also have lots of small island uh, cultures, uh, mostly indigenous. Um, the, their governments, infrastructure, and language are uh, heavily influenced by uh, colonialism. Um, mostly 
on in capitals, islands, or on specific atolls. Um, there are also significant Chinese populations um, who have a disproportionate control of the merchant economy in the region, which has led to a lot of resentment um, by natives who live there. Um, we could see um, the aftermath in Tonga after um, anti-Chinese uh, riots. The economy of Australia and New Zealand um, is based heavily in technology, business, um, also um, livestock, which um, a lot of their workforce was imported directly from um, Great Britain. Um, lots of livestock um, in New Zealand. Um, these, again, are settler colonies, not those mercantile uh, colonies like we saw in Papua New Guinea. Right? So Europeans came to these places um, and settled um, in the places where there was a, a favorable climate. Um, lots of inclusive governments as opposed to extractive ones, which is why you get those higher rates of development generally. Um, very rapid demographic transitions and economic transitions um, gained wealth um, pretty quickly. Um, and again, very, very high development, 0.9. Um, the small island economies are much different. Um, so you want to think about how do they make money, these small island economies? Um, and so the question is, do they make money from tourism? Um, some places, no. Um, there's a lot of long distances between these islands um, and between um, continents. And some of them are so small that they don't really have docks or runways. Um, so you can see um, kind of the distance between um, some of these islands and major airports, right? It's not a uh, quick flight there. Um, there's an uh, airport in uh, Kiribati, right? Pretty small airport for that country. Um, it is big business um, in some high island countries, though, tourism, such as Fiji um, and uh, French Polynesia. Um, agriculture is problematic. On these small islands um, there's poor soil um, and little arable land um, they can grow things like coconuts yams and bananas and taro um, but the question is how do they export them um, right if you don't have um, enough room for a major airport um, or a large port you can't really sell those um, to other places um, fishing has similar issues with agriculture um, right no big ports um, so you can't really be exporting a lot of um, seafood. Um, so a lot of these islands have had to be very creative um, with uh, their economies. Um, so Nauru, which is very, very small, it's a very, very small, it's only eight square miles. Um, there's only a little over 9,000 people there. Um, and there's tons of bird poop, which seems like a weird thing to point out. Um, but uh, basically, um, the, most of the island has lots of phosphates on it, and so they made a lot of money in phosphate mining. Um, in the 80s, it was the richest country in the world, even though it had only about 9,000 people. Um, but their phosphates ran out, and again, we've talked about economies that are dependent on one single export and how it's not sustainable. Um, and so now uh, they've run out of that money that they've made and uh, their land is not any good for, for growing food. Um, so now they rely heavily on aid and cheap processed um, food imports. Um, and because of that, obesity and diabetes are rampant um, in Nauru, unfortunately, because there's not much access to fresh and healthy foods. Um, Next, they, they um, had a, a bit of a banking economy where they laundered a lot of money um, for the Russian mob, and now um, they um, house prisoners for Australia, um, including asylum seekers that Australia is not um, ready to bring in yet. Um, and another example of an island economy having to become uh, innovative um, is Tuvalu. And Tuvalu is um, 10 square miles on uh, nine islands, um, mostly all atolls. So it was very, very low lying um, coral reefs. They are uh, very much suffering the effects of climate change and sea level rise. Um, they have about 10,000 people. Um, they have no phosphates like Nauru did. They have a tiny airport far from everything and almost zero arable land. Um, they also might be underwater 
in about 50 years due to climate change. And so along came the internet. And uh, what I mean by that is every country is given an internet designation. Um, so Canada is, is um, dot, uh, .can, uh, the UK is dot .uk, and so Tuvalu got dot .tv. And so Tuvalu's economy right now is um, almost based entirely off of um, selling web addresses that end in .tv that are registered to that country. Um, so anytime you visit an internet website that ends in .tv, um, it is registered in Tuvalu. So that is the last slide for this region. Uh, what you're going to do now is you're going to follow a link to um, the Saddleback Library. You're going to log in with the same login that um, you use um, for your other Saddleback websites. And you're going to watch the film, The Island President, which is all about um, the former president of the Maldives uh, and um, his um, international fight against climate change um, to save his country. Um, and after that, you are going to do um, an exercise um, that is actually worth two exercises. You're going to do a reflection um, and discussion of that movie.